Um, I'm just looking because Robert put a. Okay, here, I just got information from Robert for Diane. So I don't know how this is going to work because Diane can, is, is Diane gone now? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so he just sent it to her. So hopefully she saw a new, oh my goodness. Okay. Everybody hold tight. <laughs> Nothing happening here. I'm gonna see if I can just let her know that to check her email. I'm perplexed about the chat thing. I don't see anything like that. So, okay, I'm just gonna hope that I don't have either of their phone numbers right here handy. So <laughs> it's unfortunate that they both checked <laughs> off. I'm like, okay, hey, come back. I know, I wonder why. Um, hmm. okay, well, <laughs> this is frustrating. Um, does anybody have by any chance either Diane or Carol's phone numbers any place? I mean, I think no. it sounds like we each got an individual link. Yeah, no, everybody got one. And what happened was Diane Carol gave hers to Diane. Di yeah, Diane couldn't find hers, so she gave it to Carol. But then I don't know why they both are gone now. So, Sarah, do you by any chance have their I'm numbers looking. from when you were at Burning Man with them? Let's see. What's Diane's last name again? Carlson Biggs. Uh, she might have emailed it to me. Let me see. Carol's there. I see Carol. Okay. Oh, okay, good. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, can you hear us now? And does your, you're on mute, but. There, I unmuted her. Yeah, thank you. I had no sound before. Okay, so it looks like. Um, I had to come back in as a panelist. Thank yeah, I you. I have Diane's number. So Diane, just we just emailed Diane new contact number. So hopefully if she saw that. Carol, do you have Diane's phone number? I have her number. Oh, it looks like she just maybe called in. Somebody okay. just called in. So Diane, is that you? You have to unmute yourself. I Maybe. bet she's never raising her hand again. I know. <laughs> are we OK? Diane, are you there? I'm you here. Go. Hello. Hooray. Hooray. Hey. OK, good. Hey. Okay. All right. We're back. All right. Okay. Let's, <laughs> let's continue. Uh -huh. All right. Um, item number three, brief announcements from staff, commissioners, and liaisons. Do you have anything, Rachel? I just wanted to let you know that in your agenda packet, there was a, um, a page on civility um, principles. And it's, it's just an FYI informational piece that was shared with city staff and, um, and anyone affiliated with the city. So just read it at your leisure. Nice. Hopefully you're already practicing these principles of civility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. all I've got right now. Okay, any commissioners have an announcement? You can raise your hand or not. <laughs> Anybody? Nope. Okay. Um, item four, public comment. Um, did we have any public comment, Jesse? Not that I know of. Okay. Um, all we, right. We had, I, a, we had a, I got a letter 
for the meeting. Is that public comment? So that is, I mean, it, it is public comment in the fact that he shared it with everybody, but it's not, um, Part of you the know, meeting. it's not a public comment as that it's being called in. Um, there's right. lots and lots to unpack in that message. And there were a lot of really great ideas in it and a lot of things that are not um, accurate with what's happening right now. And um, we, you know, they're all things that can be brought up and discussed if they're agendized. And um, if anybody has questions about anything that's on there, we can agendize it and talk about them at the next meeting. There's, you know, just so you all know, there's, there's, this is meant to be a transparent process. There's no secrecy. All of our records are public records and available if anybody asks for them and things like that. Um, and it's not so, the first letter we've gotten either. So it's, you know, there's a lot of really, really great ideas that I think we all support in there. And if we had like, you know, a 10 or $20 million influx in cash, like they would be very great to implement, but we don't sadly have that now. Um, but they're, they're good things to talk about. Um, you know, and I think that we have talked about some of them in our other longer term plans. So I just want to acknowledge that, but it's not something we can put on the agenda tonight as a whole course of conversation. Diane has a hand raised. Oh, could we, um, could we put it on the agenda for our next meeting? Yeah, uh, yes, but you need to, but you need to pick what you want to put on the agenda. Like we wouldn't put, I mean, his letter is public comment. So if you want, what I would recommend doing is in between now and when we create the agenda for the next meeting, think about specifically what pieces of that we want to put on, um, you know, cause it needs to be broken okay. down into different components, but yes, of course we can put it on. So can we just put a placeholder until I do that? And it would be a, a dance venue. A dance and then venue? I will be more da dance. Yeah. Performing dance venue. And yeah. then I will be more specific. So what I would suggest if we want to put that on, let's, you know what, let's, so when we have um, like at the end of the meeting, when we can talk about topics for future agendas, let's talk about this at that point in the, in the meeting. It's because I agree with you, Rachel, that there were some good points. Okay. Yeah, right. I am putting it down and making a note of it, Diane. Perfect. Okay, thanks. I don't see any of their hands raised. So we'll go to um, item five, uh, the consent calendar. Um, does anyone have a motion to approve the minutes from our last meeting on September 14th? I make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Santer. Does anyone have a second? Oh, Diane's hand is up. Is yeah. that your? Second it. Okay, thank you, <laughs> Commissioner Carlson Biggs. Um, all in favor, say aye, raise your hand. Anyone aye. say no? Aye. 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 All right, here's your chance to say nay. So I'm gonna just call, just because I can see everybody, but I can't see Zinzi or Diane. So I'm gonna call on each of you. So Zinzi, can you confirm or yay or nay? Yay. And Diane Carlson Biggs, yay or nay? Yay. Okay, thanks. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, moving on to number six, regular items. Rachel, did you want to go through them one by one or do you like um, a summary? I think, yeah, I just wanted to kind of call out some highlights. Um, okay. There is a lot of stuff going on, a lot of things on hold, a lot of things mutating into different things. Um, you know, a lot of energy trying to fix things that we weren't anticipating on having to do right now. And also just doing things that are coming up. Like we had an opportunity to, you know, do more stuff in the downtown and Jesse's been really great and really involved in that. And um, just various things that have come up where kind of on short last term, late, last minute notice like we did we participated in supporting a day of the dead altar which was really great um but, but kind of sucked a lot of energy that we weren't expecting on right at that particular moment in time uh, sorry i want to pull up so can i um can i share my screen i believe so i think i made it so you can share okay. um 
So I'm going to pull this up just so I can kind of go through it. Um, just give me one minute, please. So are, is that, are you seeing my screen? Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I'll try to make it a little more. Um, so um, I think since the last meeting, I think the, the Arts and Cultural Affairs um, Committee has gone forward and approved three additional grants. And just to clarify, because I know this was one of the things that was brought up in that letter, that who, who reviews those is that they go to um, our subcommittee, which is Maya, Diane Carlson Biggs. It goes to, I review them, but I um, review them and then pass them along. Jesse reviews them. And then they get finally reviewed by Diane Paro, who is my boss at the city. And then after that, they go to Mike Webb, who's the city manager for final approval. We used to have a couple of outside um, folks from the community who also were part of that committee. Um, one of them was Mo Stoikoff, who used to work at the Visitors Bureau. And we've been working on trying to replace her because she's no longer there. So it's possible that we may have somebody from the university in the future be on that committee. But right now, those are the people that review it. Um, I think that Kelly Stakowitz was mentioned in that mess in that and she is not involved in that process at all, just as a just FYI. Um, so we did go ahead and award arts and cultural affairs funding um, since the last meeting to whoop, to these three projects, uh, the Davis Independent Music Initiative. And this was the extension of the kind of pilot that we did last year. So this was taking the the like individual sort of meetings and um, like music writing cohort that kind of gave feedback to each other and moving forward with a particular artist for the year. So it was funding to um, have the Davis Independent Music Initiative work with kind of coaching on supporting an individual local musician to produce an album over the coming year and the kind of publicity around that. Um, the second one was awarded to a project by Boris Alanu and it's called Pause Between Lawn and Cuffs. And it is a sound installation that will be going into the G Street Plaza. Um, it's kind of being implemented in conjunction with Open Air Davis, that like closed street atmosphere down there, as well as a number of improvements that will happen in that plaza. So they're going to be adding lighting, seating, redoing all the landscaping there. And then what that is the site of one of the new downtown restrooms that has just been um, also wrapped in vinyl. And actually, it, like just today, I just saw they're redoing the vinyl. Someone's down there right now, or maybe they're done by now. Um, but if you have not been downtown to see those, they look really amazing. Um, so that's so that's the second one. And then a project called the Healing Art Project um, with NJM Vondo is the artist who applied for that. And this is a community um, invitation going out, inviting people to participate in creating artwork that talks about how we are addressing healing in the community. And this is obviously incredibly timely right now. And I think we'll expand in the kind of coming months as our community sort of identifies what we need to do to heal right now. I think initially the concept was more around COVID and then sort of morphed into broader community healing. Um, so I'm really excited about those three. The moving on to um, public programs. There are a couple of a couple of um, alterations. So what what was going to be the Davis Cherry Blossom Festival has changed, taken their funding and um, and trapped it into this new project, which is going to be virtual, um, but which has a pretty great um, was a great pivot for them to think of some way to bring this into kind of a relevant context for what's happening right now, and. Um, so you guys know, I think that um, these are all, you know, like I have links on this so that as you're going through them, I'm encouraging everybody in previewing this. I know it's kind of a nice, a big 
um, investment of your time, but the goal is for everybody to go through and familiarize themselves with what's in these programs so that you can know about them and participate them and if, if it fits into your time and share them with other people. Oh, sorry, I just closed it on accident. Excuse me. Apologies. Don't you love technology? Today is such a good. Doing great, Rachel. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we go. I feel like we should have like tap dancing in the background or something while we're waiting. <laughs> <laughs> but more mandalas is good. Yay. Where's okay. Jared when we need him? I know, exactly. Uh, let's see. Okay, so there is, so that's, I encourage you to all check this program out that's being sponsored by the Cherry Blossom Festival. And again, consider yourselves ambassadors of these programs. So please, when you review them, if you think of friends, family, coworkers, people in the community who you would think would be interested, definitely share these with them. Um, we do, 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 I think a lot to Jesse's um, strategic work kind of behind the scenes like we're getting larger and larger numbers of folks following the social media which is really amazing um and really really helpful i think truly to these organizations right now and getting getting people involved in what they're doing so i just wanted to call that out i think i can see that carol has her hand raised oh i i was just wondering um would that include things like just posting on our um like our neighborhood next door that these things are going on yeah, for sure, definitely. Um, I mean, some of the organizations post on Nextdoor, but mostly I think that's meant more for individual, like actually, I don't know if organizations can post or if it's from individuals, but yeah. If but something that I that, can post, I yeah, think. Yeah, it would be great. Good. I mean, the yeah. more that, the more people, the more people that know these things are going on, the better, so. Cool, all right. Yeah, please do that, thank you. Um, the other kind of cool thing on here is that we were invited by, um, there's a program on campus, the Mellon Public Engaged Scholars Program, and we were invited um, to meet with them and to talk about how we, how we might create a position for a, for a scholar with the Arts and Cultural Affairs Program at the city, um, which I'm thrilled about, would mean that every summer we would have a student, like a graduate student we'd be working with who could do some kind of project with us that would be like a deep research project or some kind of interesting community engaged programming. So it's an opportunity for us to do something really interesting and connected directly with the university. So, um, so I may come back to you in the future and ask for ideas. If people have ideas for projects they'd like to see done. I think in the past we've brought up, um, you know, there's been interest in kind of doing some sort of research on something in the community that we don't really have bandwidth on our own staff to do. And so this is a really perfect opportunity to do something like that. Um, so it's exciting. Okay, so moving on to our, any, any questions about any of that so far? Nope, great. Let's see, most of the things that you see here are on hold. So just a couple of quick updates. And some of these, I know since we missed our meeting last month, I don't know, I, I don't remember exactly where we were in the process. So some of this may overlap and be a little bit redundant. Um, this is, did we show this at the last meeting? Okay, so you've already seen this. I'm just sharing it again, because it's our happy picture of something great downtown. It, so those are great. We've continued to get lots of great feedback about that. And it's great because the university is using it in their marketing now. Um, these are our brand spanking new beautiful restrooms. So yay. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Maya. <laughs> Everybody do a little. I can't so, believe she's 15. I know. Neither could, we. <laughs> Neither could we when her mom was like, uh, can we talk to you? So the only thing to change to note here is that these were installed, see this white strip, they they were installed not where they were supposed to be. So they actually came back and redid them today and I just went by and looked and they look great. But um, these are so much fun. You should go down and check them out. They're all tarot cards. And one set of them is sort of like about Davis and one set of them is about COVID. And they're really witty. Like they're really, they were already really witty but having them done by a 15 year old just makes them that much more. Okay. 
sort of fantastic and it really adds like a pop of color to this area and we've got great feedback from the um, downtown davis business association who's really pleased with how they came out um and surprisingly tons of people are using those restrooms which mm -hmm. i was not expecting but every time i've been down there i mean there's people looking at them and people waiting in line to get in oh. them and so if you're downtown and you need to go to the bathroom, E Street Plaza and G Street Plaza. <laughs> All right. Those pieces of artwork nice. were also both um, submissions to the, the communal art project that DDBA did at the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. And you can see, um, you know, this is one of the artists, Lauren Deneen, whose work we used. And she, you can see a couple of those here that were pulled out. This is one face from that. This is one face from that. And this is one face from that. So they were um, these folks that are in these windows that were kind of extracted for that. And we loved her piece. And then we went back to her and she actually provided two other images, one that's repeated on this side and another that's on the front. And they're all done on old historic maps of the area. So they're really fun to see close up. So I suggest if you're down there, check them out. And it was a really nice partnership, I think, um, for Downtown Davis Business Association, just because this is not really in their, in their, um, you know, it's not really what they're typically doing, but they really wanted to be able to use that artwork to do some other interesting initiatives downtown. So it was, it was a good, it was good. And I think it worked really well. And so they're really much more um, amenable to doing more things like that now, which will be good opportunities for us, I think. So um, along those same lines, this is the space that was the Yeti mini market, which is next door to the Yeti restaurant in the E Street Plaza. It's a space that's vacant right now and was um, Davis Downtown at a business association approached us and asked if we could try to help find an artist to do something in this space for Day of the Dead. So this is Melissa Moreno who came in at the kind of last minute and did this really amazing um, ofrenda, which is an altar for Day of the Dead. And um, we had really very last minute, so it was hard to pull off, but she did an amazing job of reaching out and inviting community members to submit photos of loved ones to share, which were then printed out and included in here. Um, and and it was um, it was really beautiful and really meaningful. And it, we, it was so last minute, and but it was something that I think we really wanna work with her in the future or, or similar situation to do something with more advanced planning so that more thought can be put into it and more outreach. Cause I think what made it really incredible was the fact that people's work was included in it. Um, it you know, it wasn't just a generic thing. It had people from our own community in it. Ruth, are you holding your hand up? I'm raising my hand. I just wanted to make a comment. My aunt is an artist up in Eugene. She's a drawer, actually. She made this amazing thing. I'm wearing this unbelievable piece of art. And uh, all my ears. And she um, is a member of an art center. And every year they do a Day of the Dead altar. And they invite different artists to come and make the altars at this art center. It's a really amazing event. And one that I'd love to see become a regular event here and you could have different artists every year make these altars. There's a, uh, thanks for sharing that. I think Petaluma has also a similar situation. And I think this was a really interesting, I mean, just to give you a little back, bit of background context on what happened with this, because it was a kind of a crazy um, series of events. So it was placed in this space and um, we made it really clear and Melissa made it really clear that she did not want this to be part of the downtown um, Davis Halloween celebration, because that's always been a problem that it's been kind of lumped into the way that Halloween and, and they kind of still like was still a little bit referred to as Day of the Dead decor. Um, and we really wanted to distinguish the fact that it was not decoration for the plaza that it was actually a practice. Um, it's a celebration. It's a cultural celebration. And um, so we she opened this up and we and received these photographs from people and they were all placed on there and one of the members of our community um she actually is a former teacher of natalie corona who as you know passed away last january um and then we also had community members who asked to place photographs of george floyd brianna taylor and ahmed aubrey so they were also on there and when she placed the pictures um 
what ended up happening, I think I can point it out to you because I think they're actually right here. So Natalie Corona's here and um, the other pictures of, I, I can't tell where they are exactly, but they were placed adjacent to each other and we had a community member um, complain about it. And I very deliberately did not pick the picture of her that's become sort of the iconic picture of her with the blue line flag because it has, it's really offensive. We've been told to many members of our community and we felt like there was no way that it was very important not to have that particular image here. Um, but there, but it was brought up to, you know, to the group that put this on to the Downtown Davis Business Association and to Melissa and to the city that this was um, offensive, the having these um, images adjacent to each other, one representing police, one representing people who had been killed by police. Um, and so there was a really interesting conversation that went on kind of behind the scenes for several days with the person in the community who had brought this up, with the person who had asked to have the photographs placed there with Melissa um, and with Downtown Davis Business Association trying to figure out the appropriate way to address this. And, um, and it was really stressful, but really pretty incredible because people like had really thoughtful conversations and came to a good place wow. with it and, um, and then you know, it kind of opened up, I don't, I don't know where I'm going with this exactly. She ended up taking it down early because she actually felt like with the election happening that she didn't want it to become a target downtown, which is really unfortunate. Um, but just to give you a sense of kind of where, where the mood has been um, and where it was with her in this particular installation. So I hope that we can do it in the future. And again, like to have it be a more, a, a project that has lot more lead time um, building up to it and maybe some, with something more prominent. I think like the project that Ruth's bringing up, the the one that I've seen in Petaluma is amazing. And they have, like you said, it's in an art center and different groups create these amazing, amazing altars. Um, and then people can come in and they have, you know, it's like, obviously if it weren't COVID and you can have more people gathering, you can have lots of other things going on at the same time too. Carol, it looks like you have your hand raised. Uh, just real quick, uh, can you tell me the name of the artist again and where is she from? Melissa Moreno? Yeah. She, so she, she's an ethnic, she, she's from here. She's, uh -huh. um, I mean, she's not a, um, artist, an artist, artist per se. She's an ethnic studies professor oh, um, at Woodland Community College, but okay. she's been really involved. She works with the city every year for the Cesar Chavez celebration. Um, Got it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah, and there's a great, great- I wish I had known about it. I would have gone and looked at it. It was very short. Like I said, we literally, the idea literally went into play in less than a week. So there was very little time to publicize it. Um, so next year, you know, hopefully we'll have, it'll be a- Yeah, longer, no, I, I love process. it. And there's, there's a great so video. Long. There's a great video, if you look it up, of an interview with her, um, with Heidi Kellison. So she explains kind of the background of it in a nice way. So any questions about that? I'm super thankful that she did it so quickly. It's yeah. beautiful. It was a huge heavy lift. Like you can't see in here, but there's 10 folding tables. Like all this stuff had to get procured in a very short period of time. <laughs> um, so it was, it was good. Um, and I had some Dia de los Muertos stuff in, in my house and I had a cousin from the Midwest come visit and she said, oh, is it Halloween? <laughs> and I said, no, you know, and, and then we had a conversation. It was actually, it, it, it's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's really, it's, um, it's a tradition that's been sort of celebrated in our downtown for many years, but always kind of mixed in with the day that the, that the downtown celebrates the Halloween treat trail. And, um, you know, I don't kind know the opposite. background. Right. I, don't, I don't know the background of why they always do it that day. I think just because they have the mass of people down there, but it's definitely a good conversation, I think. Wow. There's new leadership at the Downtown Davis Business Association to really think about how we how we think about expanding the scope of what they do downtown so that it's more diverse. Um, you know, if we do things like this, it doesn't need to fit into the context of something they're already doing. It can be its own celebration. Um, and I think that's a really important role that 
you know, groups like the Arts Commission and the International House can play in kind of working with the downtown folks to, to keep kind of supporting that type of activity. Um, so this window is again, still, it's gonna be vacant now and we have the opportunity if we want to, to help support putting something in there over the holidays. Um, and I already did ask them to make the holidays not be Christmas, but like actually like winter holidays. So um, hopefully that happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Day of the Dead has been celebrated at the cemetery on the Day of the Dead in Davis, right? On yeah, the, and it is, uh, you know, I did not put that in here. I I sometimes forget to put everything in here. So um, actually I did, but I didn't have a photograph of it. The last, so the project up top, um, the project that Danielle Fedor um, did, uh, it's all the way up here. So the last painting um, in this street art for solidarity for community health and resiliency, the last street painting was completed and it was done by um, Judy Katambe at the Davis Cemetery. Thanks, Sarah. There's no photograph, but um, she did a beautiful piece there and it was partially commemorative um, of her mother, but it was done in conjunction with that celebration at the cemetery, which is where traditionally Day of the Dead is celebrated, as well as the altars and people's homes. So, yeah. Uh, Ruth and I both have our hand up. Yeah, yeah. Who do you want? <laughs> Go ahead, Sarah. <laughs> so, I don't, I don't want to open a big can of worms. I want to make an observation about, I recently hosted an art event downtown at a number of locations. And we reached out to the Davis Downtown Business Association and they decided not to collaborate with us because they thought it was too political. So I think we should be aware that the, we as the Arts Commission play a really important role in supporting art and freedom of speech. And that collaborating with the Downtown Davis Business Association is great. Um, there are other neighborhoods in the city also that are, have more art desert that we wanna also be thinking about. And we should just be very thoughtful that there's some pretty tight control over artistic license when you partner with the Downtown Davis Business Association. So just keeping that in mind. Thanks. And it's, I think it's actually a super important point. I mean, why I'm not, I didn't, I'm not going into the whole backstory of this installation, but why it became kind of this issue was that once it became politicized downtown Davis, because of exactly what you just said, got really like sort of, um, you know, I mean, they had brought that up initially as one of the reasons why they were not positive, whether they felt okay having it there. And I had said, it's not a political thing. This is, people are gonna be sharing pictures of their family members and their loved ones. Um, and so when it did, you know, inadvertently become politicized, they were not happy with that. Um, and it's, you know, I think what Sarah's saying is really important. And it's, and it's also something that, you know, it's important, I think, for us to continue to advocate with them because I think they are just honestly, as the city is really, really, um, reticent to get themselves involved in the middle of something that's political, but it's more and more important. And I think it's something that our community, you know, is, is doing and is wanting, and it just needs, you know, I mean, we, like we, it's not our role to dictate to them what they can and can't do. But I think what Sarah said of thinking about other ways to do it in other parts of the city where, um, you know, where there is more flexibility and what's able to be put out or not is important. So it's not and a can of worms. That... It's a good point. <laughs> Individual business owners were perfectly happy with political things as well. So it's one thing to partner with like the co-op or the avid reader, and it's another thing to partner with the association. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, Ruth. And I just wanted to piggyback on the back of what Sarah was saying that it, I feel like uh, in Eugene, which is where my aunt does this, which is a city double exactly, almost exactly double the size of Davis. They do it in a private art center. And I don't know what our relationship is, if any, with the Davis Art Center and whether that would be a good place for it. But it's nice to have it in a, inside a space where you can have people walking around and looking at the different altars. It's not optimal if you're gonna invite many artists to do it in one window. So that's just- Yeah, yeah. 
Um, no, I mean, we have great relationships with the Pence and with the Davis Art Center, and it's a matter of, um, you know, they're suggesting it to them or, or having them decide that it's something that they focus on for that period of time. So can I, can I go forward? Yes. Um, other upcoming projects, these are all still sort of um, in holding pattern right now because of where we are with COVID. Um, the only update for, for consideration of new sightings is that um, we had a great, Jesse and I met with the, one of the um, property managers at Fulcrum Properties, which is the Davis Commons property owner. And um, they were interested in putting some public art there. They're doing like a big remodel in front of it and putting fire pits and things like that in. And we mentioned the chicken and egg piece and they really love it. <laughs> so, um, so we were like, come on. So they are in contact with the artist, Andrea Greenlees, and actually somebody from Fulcrum is going to Reno this week to see the piece in person. And they're interested in and possibly acquiring it and re resurfacing it. So it would be like all brand spanky new and it would be really in a prominent location and they would be paying for the whole thing. So it's not a done deal by any means, but it's really great that there's interest in that. And in any case, I mean, they're, they're going to invest a substantial amount of money in putting some kind of public art in that spot, which is really exciting. Um, and, and just, one more thing about Davis Commons, because while we're talking about it, and it was mentioned in the letter that was shared with you as public comment, um, the space that is vacant that used to be the bookstore and then it used to be Whole Foods, um, it's not unleased. So it is not a vacant space that they are not able to rent out. The tenant who owns that space is still under lease and still paying for that vacant space. Um, and there have been many people in the community who've been trying the entire time since that space was vacant, myself included, to figure out a way to use it. And they have been um, the, the tenant of it, which is um, Whole Foods slash Amazon, has been unwilling to let anything happen in it. Just so you all know the background of it, it's not an empty space that's unleased sitting there. And really? we, have, we have spoken directly with the property owner, which is Fulcrum Properties. They have not been able to make any headway. They would love to have something in that space. They cannot break the lease. Um, and so that's just so when you know, lease? it's for a long time. But I mean, at this point, I think it's, I don't honestly know. I think it's another like three years or something, but it's been really problematic. Everybody knows that it's really problematic. Lots of people have been trying to fix it just so you all know the background of that, that it's not that people are just like, oh, there's a giant empty space there. Like we have had so many ideas about pop-up things in there before COVID. I mean, it would be an amazing place to put studios or and lots of things, um, but but we haven't been able to. So, um, so aggravating. It's very aggravating. <laughs> and then it's especially aggravating when people complain about it because you're like, we're trying so hard for years to do something here. <laughs> and, um, okay. So that is um, the chicken and egg situation update. The frog totem update, which is as you would call the piece <laughs> in Petaluma, is um, I had a meeting just a couple days ago with uh, members from the Parks and Arts Subcommittee, which are um, two members of the Parks Commission, and shared with them a list of locations, both in our parks and open spaces that have been identified by city staff as possible locations for a piece of public art and they are gonna go to um, look at those sites in the next few weeks, I think, to see if they can find a site that they feel like is suitable to place that piece. Um, and in the meantime, just to kind of put closure on it, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up the purchase of the piece and move it here from Petaluma so it's here. And so that um, just like piece has been purchased, the money can be passed along to um, to the artists in Petaluma and then we can have the piece located here and begin to take steps towards citing it. Any questions about those? Sarah? Just, I, I missed, what was the decision to put it in North Davis? Um, they're looking at that as one of the possibilities. I mean, okay. their, their initial thought after looking at the public art map was that there's already um, quite a bit of art in that location. So I think they were going to try to see where else. 
Um, we did look at the concept of maybe putting it in the pond and they felt like that was just like too much, um, too much right now to try to, to figure out all the like environmental impact things that would have to come with that and pouring a base inside of a water um, location. So we kind of rolled that out for now, but I think they are still, yeah. they're still aware of the fact that the commission requested um, to look at that location first and the connection with Julie Partansky um, and why that location was suggested, but also um, looking at trying to think of places to put this. And I think their, their key driving priority, I think is gonna be try to find a location that makes the most relevant sense with a frog sculpture, um, rather than putting it in a location specifically just um, you know to have it exactly be equally dispersed. Does that, that make sense? Um, we want it to make sense in its surroundings. So they're gonna come up with a list and then that list will be brought to you um, for more consideration before anything gets decided. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, so just the Davis Centennial, I put a piece in here just so you can see this is, um, it's not completely done because you can see there still is tweaking that has to go on like to even these out. But this is the finished cast in bronze centennial seal, which is amazing. Um, and, and there's Susan Sarandon, who's the, uh, Susan Sarandon, <laughs> Susan Shelton, who's the artist. Um, and this is in the foundry in Sacramento where it was cast. So what is happening now with this is that Bill Rowe, who is kind of the lead donor on the project, um, has been working directly with our city community development department. And he's moving forward with getting the necessary permitting and things like that for the work that's going to be done at the Hunt Boyer uh, Mansion Plaza. And that is going to be, um, he is doing that work and taking that on as part of the donation. I mean, if you remember the Arts Commission um, contributed $25,000 from our Municipal Arts Fund toward the installation costs of um, bringing this in and putting it in there, but the remainder of that cost, which is significantly more, is going to be part of the donation. Um, and part of it, I think, through his business tandem properties, will maybe be doing some of the work on it as well. So that's that's good because it's moving forward, despite the fact that it was sort of pulled off the table this year because a lot of projects were kind of um, scrapped this year because of shortages for COVID, and he's just still kind of moving it forward. So that's awesome. Um, one change, which is kind of disappointing, is that it was decided to take the seat cubes out of the design, um, which I felt like were actually a really important part of the design because they put seating in the plaza. Um, it was not my decision, <laughs> unfortunately. And they felt like the, the folks who kind of finalized the decision in our community development department decided that they wanted something that would allow for more flexibility. So it's it's not a it's disappointing, but I think we'll come up with another good solution for it. So one of those might be that we partner with Mishka's and Mishka's is allowed to kind of extend out into that plaza and put more tables and chairs there, which would kind of be great. Um, and another is that we come up with some other seating solution. Um, but in any case, I'm super excited that it's moving forward and it's you know, gonna be a huge change um, to have this new area there. And the piece is beautiful. And our next step will be to, um, to start developing some of the storytelling and kind of historical educational curriculum around it. So one thing I wanted to bring up um, is, how, is, is if the Arts Commission would like to me to start working on putting together some kind of RFP to bring in somebody to actually work on curriculum for it. Because I think that would be a great way to approach it. Or I guess I'm throwing it out to see if you all have ideas now of what your next step would be. But um, you know, we have the opportunity, I think, to hire somebody to, to develop curriculum around it and to develop, it doesn't need to be curriculum, I'm calling it that, but it could partially be for formal learning, but it also could be for informal learning. So it could be something that gets turned into, um, you know, some sort of app or some sort of site that you go to that has background on it. Um, so I wanted to kind of throw that out. Also, as I'm saying that I'm realizing that Maya is going to need to check off in four minutes. Um, I can do 10 more. I'm going to go late to the next thing. Oh, you are? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I want to kind of quickly open that discussion up and see if anybody here has 
Um, and there's no rush on this. So we can also just like bring it up now, think about it. And then at the next meeting kind of decide what our next step is. It. But it is something that if we wanted to do now, like this is something during COVID that could actually happen and start moving. Um, it might so. be nice to come up with like our learning objectives for it to like, cause it's such a big, like it could go so many ways. So mm -hmm. it might be nice for us to have like a conversation about like, if it was our dream scenario, it would do this, like just a list of goals. Okay. So how would you, do you want to do that as like a, a subcommittee thing, or do you want to do it as a conversation in a meeting? Like what feels like it would be the best way to take up, tackle that next step? I guess how many folks are interested in being a part of that is the question. I would be interested. I think it should be more of a full committee thing. Um, I really do. Okay. <laughs> so but she's volunteering I, all opinion. of you. <laughs> yes, I'm volunteering everyone. So I would, I, mean, suggest, I would yeah. suggest maybe rather than, because since everybody didn't volunteer just now, what <laughs> if um, a few people who are interested in creating a starting point do that and then bring it back to the full commission to review and and provide feedback on. Sounds good. Yeah, so, I'm interested. Okay. I am too. So I will follow up the meeting and send out something about it. And then whoever's interested can um, can respond and then we'll coordinate Jump the in. subcommittee. Does that sound good? That sounds good. Thanks. Yes. Okay. It looks um, amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really incredible. It's really beautiful. Can I um, ask a technical question about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm just curious, how is that protected? I'm assuming that you can walk on it. Does yeah, you, you can walk on it. Um, no, I mean, in a couple hundred years, like it's going to get worn down. <laughs> <laughs> it's brass, right? It's bronze. Bronze, I mean, sorry. Yeah, bronze. yeah. Yes. It's bronze. And um, like the, the, I'm being sort of facetious, but I mean, it's obviously a consideration. You can kind of see in this, but I think the whole thing is slightly, um, is that convex? <laughs> it's slightly convex so that, um, you know, so that it kind of doesn't pool water on it for one thing, although there obviously are spots in it where that's gonna happen. Um, the plaza, the original reason why we decided to have the plaza around it was to create a space where people could, um, could walk around it, but, you know, you will be able to step on it. So there, she has a similar piece that's at the Capitol in Sacramento, right, kind of right in front of the Capitol building. And there are a few of them there and, you know, it's, it's the same thing, it'll be there and people can stand on it, but it's. She did that one with Donna Billick, right? Pretty durable. Yeah, she did a piece there with Donna Billick, exactly. Um, okay, any other questions about this? So I will follow up about that and see who's interested in working on the initial stab at the um, learning goals for this. And collection care and maintenance. Um, I don't think there's much to report here. We are working on trying right now to get the clock in the East Street Plaza up and running and to get, and the fountain piece of that as well. Um, it was running briefly and then it's now it's not running again. So they're trying to troubleshoot that. And I'm still working with the staff in our um, parks department to look long-term at getting the fountain in Central Park to be back up and running. Um, so those are two, two pet projects of mine. I'm like, we will have water in this town. Um, so hopefully those will get going eventually. Are you talking about the fountain not the ground fountain that sprays up, right? That was no, like thank you. So years ago or whatever, but but the yeah. one like that runs along the wall there is that the yes, one? thanks, Ruth. So there are two things that were formerly fountains. There, one is a splash pad, um, and that has that was kind of the thing where the water squirts up out of the ground and kids kind of played in it. And it was over by the um, farmers market kind of office building next to the um, bicycle hall of fame building. And the other, and that is proposed right now to be a new one to be designed and placed down at the opposite end of the park, um, near where the playground is, where the carousel is. 
And what I'm talking about is the fountain that is kind of right where Fourth Street comes into um, Central Park. And it's it was a piece that it was designed originally specifically for the farmer's market so that people could wash vegetables um, and have a place to clean them and get water and hang out there and stuff like that. So, um, so we're trying to get that turned back on. All right, questions about that? All right, so um, let's see what else lasted here is we received an exciting award. Um, the city, this Helen Putnam Award is an award that's offered every year from the California <laughs> League of Cities. And it is a, um, it's a really nice, just like feather in the cap and they offer them in all different categories. And we received the one this year for economic development and the arts for a project that um, we initiated actually when I was working with the Safe Routes to School program coordinator, um, Loretta Moore, who some of you might know who worked at the city before. And we commissioned, we had some grant money that was from a Safe Routes to School grant. And we commissioned the Bike City Theater Company to develop a, um, a musical about bicycle safety that could be presented in the schools as a school assembly. And they created something that was way beyond like the scope of what we imagined that included like suffragettes. And it was the story about Andy Londonderry, who was, it's a true story, who was the first woman to ride a bike around the world. Um, and so anyway, it was, it's just a great, it was a great time to have something like that because we're really advocating right now to try to get the city and um, local entities to put more resources into supporting the arts during this particular time. Um, and to really help them understand, um, you know, why the arts are important to support across a number of different, for a number of different reasons. But so, so having this was a great kind of boost to that. Um, I'm just gonna lean over for one sec to turn my light on, hang on. I just realized I'm sitting in a dark room. <laughs> Thank you, daylight savings. Um, so anyway, just encourage you again to check this out more at your leisure. Um, and it's great for Bike City Theater Company, just they were able from this grant that we gave them then to go ahead and take this musical they had developed and present it to surrounding school districts and make money from it. So it was, it's a really great model that we hope to replicate more um, in other areas. Like this was from an active transportation program grant and there are similar ways that this could be replicated using grants for all other different kinds of things that are not specifically arts related. Um, okay, so this is just a bunch of stuff I stuck in the end. I'm going to start sticking these in the end of my staff reports because there are so many resources and so much interesting information. So don't feel compelled to have to check these all out. But if you want to do more background research, um, there's so much happening right now just in advocating for the arts um, and helping artists and arts communities survive during um, you know, the economic situation that we're in right now. And if any of you are interested in learning more about that or other areas, let me know and I'll pull other resources up for you because um, I'm just getting inundated with them right now. So um, Maya, I wanna wrap up that part of it because I know you need to get off. Um, and I don't know what was next on our, on our agenda. that short-term project. Right? Sorry. So it was like the conversational part of it. All right. No, no, that's okay. okay. Don't worry. That was all really cool and exciting. Um, so Rachel and I just talked uh, last week a little bit about like how challenging it's been for all of us, like to feel like we're getting moving towards things and things are getting canceled. And um, I'm sure we all feel like it might be nice to do something that has like a end date. Um, so we were just thinking like it might be nice for the commission to think of a few like small projects that are just like low hanging fruit things that would be relatively simple for us to put together that would really like have a big impact. So the idea being that it's like little resources but the impact is bigger. So what I can do since we're um, finishing up is send out like a little Google form for people to fill out to see what ideas you have. And then Rachel and I could look at that and say like, oh, like maybe these two things can work. We could pair things together or like make decisions about what to move forward with. Does that sound okay? Uh, okay, so what's going to be 
Can I also suggest that um, anyone who wants to reach out to one other commissioner and have a conversation and make some suggestions together just because it might be more fun to bounce ideas off of someone and maybe even someone you don't know as well or whatever. That's yeah. a great idea. That'd be awesome. Yeah, the idea being that we want to do things, we want to try to finish off the year or even if it goes into next year, of course, just small impact things that we can offer the community as resources um, to keep them engaged with the arts during this time. So I'll, I'll uh, make that and then send it to Rachel. That's a great idea. Thank I'm, you. In my humble opinion. <laughs> definitely, I'm definitely feeling the like, hurry up and wait kind of Yeah, energy. exactly. I can't tell you how gratifying it was for us to have those wraps put on the bathrooms downtown just because it was like something tangible that got finished. <laughs> like, it's like such a, you know, non-essential thing, but it was like, it, it, like so many things are on hold. And so, yeah, thank you, Maya, for bringing that up. And sure. Um, yeah. And, and I think, yeah, I mean, we could think of other ways to sort of brainstorm and maybe think of some questions for people because it because this can be like an ongoing thing just the start of something ongoing yeah i think we can use what we what you all fill in as like a starting point for a discussion maybe and then um we can think together through it what sarah put together this amazing show downtown i mean i want to give her a lot of props for that i don't know if any of you got to go to it but it was pretty amazing it was it was beautiful, a lot of artists participated. It was a great event, there was music. It was really vibrant and it really lifted my spirits to see it. So I know it was a lot of work, but it was, I think that's the kind of thing that we could do. It was amazing. Thanks for bringing that up. It's um, like, it's so hard in these staff updates. Like there's so many things that I personally wanna feature and like they're supposed to be city related things, but obviously, um, that, that project is amazing. And, um, you know, I think in the information Jesse's sending out, I know I'm like a broken record, but I always want to encourage people to be following that because she really does a great job sharing out information about projects like that and that are upcoming. And, um, yeah, I, that was one of the most amazing things I've seen downtown for a really long time, just because it was such a good, it was just such a great way to get businesses to engage in a really active way and was using art to promote like things that we care about and so that, thank you for doing it and thanks for bringing it up Ruth. Carol has a raised hand. Quick question um so maybe it's just me but I, I'm finding you know with this business online and such I, I'm feeling more isolated from what's going on downtown and, and I'm missing some of these events what's the best way to keep more current? You know, I mean, I, I just, the Arts Alliance or, you know, what's the best way to know what's going on? Okay. Well, are you, yeah, good, Jesse, go ahead. Um, the Davis Dirt is doing a really good job of, they, they're operating the same way that they normally do, but they're just featuring all these virtual events, um, but also in-person ones as they come up. Um, Facebook seems to be the way that most people are advertising things um, from what I'm seeing. There are also um, more substantial things are being um, pretty well featured in the enterprise. Um, and then some of the things that are more affiliated with the university are a lot of them are on Instagram. Um, hey, Gracie. The Vanguard too. The hey, Vanguard. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, when we promoted our event, that was exactly what we did. Davis Dirt, Enterprise, Facebook, Vanguard. Maya, do you need to check out? Okay, so Sorry, what I'm gonna do, Thank since you. we're not Thank quite you. done, if this is Thanks okay, is can we, cause I think we still have a little bit more to do here. So um, why don't you, I guess, pass the baton to Diane and she can <laughs> okay, moderate the end good. of the meeting. Thank you very much. Thanks, and I'll be in touch with that info. Nice to okay. see ya. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Okay. So, did that? Um, that helps. Yeah, Thank keep, you. Keep, keep going, because I didn't want to cut that off. Because it's yeah. yeah, and honestly, like some of the stuff that's been happening, it's happening kind of last minute, and it's happening not through nor like necessarily through organizations that have, you know, kind of 
practices already in place for marketing things, you know, like the thing Sarah did. So a lot of it's happening more through, through like viral stuff or through word of mouth or through um, just through different avenues. Uh, so there's not necessarily like a kind of magic go to it all. But if you are, if you follow that stuff that those guys brought up, then I think those are, those will be good. Yeah. yeah. I'm sharing most of the things that I come across, except for this is sort of a tricky time where there are so many political things that I would normally want to share out, but that's not really appropriate for our program to be sharing out. Um, so I hope that people are looking out, uh, you know, following individual organizations as well. Um, but that's been a little bit frustrating because there are so many amazing events that are not quite right for us to share, but I would just love to promote them a little bit more, but not quite the place. Any more questions on that one? <laughs> I just yeah. had a question as we're thinking about these short-term project ideas. Um, I know we don't have funding for like the arts grant, but are you thinking like as we're coming up with ideas, should we be thinking, you know, a thousand dollars of a project or like zero money, but just ideas we can put out there? Like, oh, I mean, we have, we still have funds. So even though we're not doing the regular ground of community arts grants, we still have the funding from the arts and cultural affairs fund. And even though there's not a lot in there, um, I don't know off the top of my head, I think we still have 30 or $40,000 in there for the year, maybe. Um, right or me, I don't have the exact number, so I don't, that could be not accurate, but you know, we also have our municipal funds art money. So, you know, it's possible that if we wanted to think of some smaller things that are public art installation things that we could use those funds for that. Um, so I wouldn't let money necessarily be, um, be an obstacle to it. And I think, you know, unfortunately like this, that was Maya's idea to bring that up and then she had to get off. Um, right before, but you know, she we were brainstorming a little bit before, and she was thinking about you know, like some of them can be ways to engage the community in our existing art. So you know, we just we have all these new public art maps that are published, and we have a lot of artwork out, and people are trying to spend more time outdoors. And um, one of the goals we've had for a long time is to think of some like interpretive things, like scavenger hunt type things, or you know, tours. Like this week, um, somebody asked me for all the different pieces of public art we have that have anything to do with bicycles. Somebody, my daughter, um, <laughs> I'm all, I'll give the mystery person away. But you know, like there are themes that could be put up, put together so that there could be different themed tours or walking tours or biking tours, or also ways to, you know, along the lines of what we were thinking with the centennial seal of ways to put together learning objectives that could be associated with different pieces of public art. Um, so, so more, you know, it could be things like that, like thinking around what we already have, like what resources we already have and how do we make that have bigger impact. But it could also be, um, you know, thinking about like some of the different ideas that have come up lately are commissioning, you know, once we have approval to do this, which it seems like it's getting, you know, there's more and more live music happening. You know, it could be something like commissioning. Uh, San Francisco just started a new program called Just Add Music, where they are giving stipends to musicians to perform, um, you know, around the city. It could be something like that, where we take our existing funds, um, you know, if given approval to do something like that, to start doing something that, you know, allows us to be giving some money to get it into the hands of local artists who are out of more work right now but also just that that is such a positive thing for people's health and wellness right now to have music. So it could be lots and lots of different things. It could be more collaborations with Downtown Davis. It could be things that are virtual. Um, there's not really a limit to it. So I think the idea was just things that are tangible. Like so many of the things that we want to do are these big things that take years and years and years to implement um, and rely on you know so many different departments and community partners and approvals and it was more of like, how do we do some things that are tangible and feasible within like a window that we can see? <laughs> how do we keep ourselves going is I think what the idea was right now. Um, and, and really to keep the arts visible because I think it's really, really important right now that we continue to do that. Um, 
one of the things that I did not share in this uh, staff update, but it's I'll send it out, I think in the next one, maybe I just didn't include it was um, the Arts Alliance, I think since the last time we met, sent a group letter to the Sacramento Community Foundation, um, asking them to consider funding the arts because so far they have not been, um, that hasn't been a prioritized funding stream for COVID recovery funds. And it was, I think, really impactful. And it's the first time that the Arts Alliance has done something like that, where as a group, they had many members sign on to this letter um, that was actually initiated by Shelley Gilbride from the International House, but you know, very directly saying like, these, this is what's happening in the arts community locally. These, this is what we need. This is why it's important to make sure that these organizations and programs make it through this period of time. Um, so, we all, you know, it is, it's something that's incumbent upon all of us to continue to advocate for in our own circles, what, whoever they may be, um, you know, and if we have the opportunity to, to advocate beyond our circles, um, it might be something that, you know, that we want to think about doing on the Arts Commission as well, although it's, we're in a little bit different of a position than the Arts Alliance as far as advocating in that particular way. I don't know if that was answering anything or if I just went off on like a little soapbox, but. <laughs> um, okay, so, so Maya will send out something and then people can start thinking about um, ideas. And I think Sarah's idea was great um, about, you know, connecting and having a brainstorming session with one other person. And then I think that's something we can also continue to do obviously in future meetings, so. Um, so anything else on that? Um, I just had a quick question that may seem completely unrelated, but it, it isn't. Um, do you know how the day center for the homeless is operating during COVID? Have they officially opened? Do you happen to know? I don't know, but I can find out. I actually just, I talked to um, our homeless coordinator today actually and okay. I don't I don't know what they're doing but I um but just since it was sort of relevant to what you just said I sent him information about a um choir program that was that I came across from something today and it's specifically a choir program for people who are um some homeless and some in addiction recovery programs and it was a beautiful model and I shared it with him for, oh, for wow. the respite center and also with our county mental health court because I thought it would be a really interesting thing for them to look into also. Um, I'll let you know, I'll reach out to him and I'll okay. get back to you and let you know. Cause that yeah. is definitely an area that we could think about, um, about, I mean, that's a place we could think about implementing an arts program um, like in conjunction with our homeless coordinators for the city. And it's a place where I think it would be really well received and could be really successful. Um, so let me make a note. Thanks. We could talk to the folks who run the ICU program. Yeah, yeah. I see you, not I see yes. you. For okay. a long time, I thought it was I see you. And yeah. I, like, I don't get it. <laughs> okay, so I'll find out about that and get back to you. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I can't imagine how they would be doing that right now with COVID because it's all in a very contained space that I don't, I honestly don't know, so. Um, okay, Diane, would you like to take us into item seven, um, which is on the, uh, oh, you can't see it because you're not on video. So um, does it work for you to moderate or does somebody else want to take on just, the last piece of this. Diana, did we lose you? I was on mute. Oh. <laughs> okay, it's uh, number seven is commission and staff communication. Yeah. Okay. So does anybody have anything they'd like to bring up for um, upcoming meeting items and long-term topics for the agenda? Well, how we are at the very about beginning about about uh, T Timothy's letter and just you know maybe pulling out things that that sound like they're good ideas. Um, 
that so for for, for our future discussion um and, and i was just sitting here as, as during this conversation um about things that are going on you know i know his big thing is is dance and uh well theater but but dance is part of that and uh yeah I've, I've made it through covid pretty much by every friday dancing with a bunch of neighbors uh down at the end of my my street and it's been so much fun and uh you know number one it it i know it's friday so the days aren't so mushed together and number two it's, it's great just to get to, together with your neighbors of course we're 10 feet apart with masks on but uh it, it's been wonderful um and you know we do it to music right so i was just thinking that's a way to kind of combine music and motion together and it's outside and it's uh something you can do all year round as long as it's not raining i guess so so how do you want and i don't mean to be like i, I totally am supportive of what you're saying and i am in support of of the idea of a dance venue but before we put this on the agenda i want to try to rein in what exactly it is that we're putting on the agenda. Well, it doesn't um, have to be just dance, but it, it would be one of the things I would be interested in, I guess is what I'm saying. So, uh, so and you don't have to answer this now, you can think about it more, but like we need to rein in on what we're putting on the agenda. Um, right. So whether it is, um, you know, there was just a lot in there and it needs right, to be and I'm not of, looking at it right now and I haven't printed it out and, you know, kind of look like at you're it. looking, for example, the potential of adding an affordable dance space to the dance venues in Davis or reviewing the cost structure of existing spaces for third party rentals and assessing whatever, like that's what you're looking for in terms of a proposal, right? I just want to put something on that there's like something we can actually talk about. I mean, like talking about turning the city gymnasium into a dance hall is not an option <laughs> that we can discuss. It's not, it's a, it's a wonderful idea, but it's, it has a purpose and function already that exists. And that is not um, really, I mean, it's that, so now that it, we lost the grad, like, right. There so, are public or private spaces for dancing. So the yeah. question is, how do you have a community conversation or a commission conversation about creating, like sourcing a new dance venue in Davis, right? Yeah, yeah. so so the challenge there is, um, you know, I, I like I want us just to think strategically about is there like what, you know, I mean, we can open the conversation up next time and just brainstorm about it, but you know, really like we have to think about kind of, it would be good between now and then to think about what we want to try to get out of that conversation. If we want to look at reaching out to some, um, you know, reaching out either to our own recreation department and recommending as a commission that they implement a social dance program um, in one of our existing spaces or connecting with folks we know in the community, with businesses, and trying to advocate for things like that to happen through private businesses. So just, you know, or I odd want- odd fellows. Yeah. Odd fellows. Like, I just, just spend some time thinking about what we want to accomplish with that. So we have some structure to it, and I'll do the same. With, with this and Rachel, you're very those... good also at reminding us, like, what is the Arts Commission's role? What's the city's role versus, like, the private sector? Because- it yeah. can get very mushy very quickly. And that's the part that's really challenging is that, you know, like I think we all would love to have another great dance venue, but it's, you know, if it's something that has to happen in a place like the grad, it's not really up to us to decide if somebody's going to start a local business that has that component to it. I mean, we can go out and brainstorm and approach people or encourage other people to do that. Um, you know, I mean, I can think like off the top of my head, there are some places in downtown where I could see the business, you know, setting up an outdoor dance thing, but um, it's not something the city, like we don't have the authority to go in like to a vacant storefront and say, you need to be a dance hall or a movie theater or something like that. So I just want us to be working within parameters yeah. that are reality-based. Um, right, something like, that we, we, could, can, like, we could fund a dance pop-up, for example, if someone wanted to apply, you know, we had grants again or whatever. I, like all I wanted to do this weekend was have like a giant dance pop up in Central Park. But 
you know, like right now we can't do that, obviously. We certainly can't. I mean, somebody else maybe could, but so, yeah. So I just, just think about those things. And um, I mean, that one, yeah, like an online dance party. <laughs> I've done that. Disco. It's, awesome. it's awesome. I have a DJ. <laughs> I mean, I'm honestly like, we could just come up with a brainstorming list of things that we could do now and things that we'd like to see in the future. And that's yeah. the kind of thing where we could go as an arts commission and put out an RFP and say, we'd like to commission somebody to take on this project. We'd like you to set up a monthly virtual dance party. And we can take some of our public art funds or some of, not our public art funds, but some of our um, arts and cultural affairs funds to pass that off to somebody that actually can manage it. Like we don't have bandwidth to manage it. Um, I mean, if somebody on the commission wanted to take that on, they certainly could, but it's actually like a project. It's like a job. Um, but so those would be some, some things you could think about. Um, and, you know, I would say also like look around you in the next chunk of time and look and see where you see spaces where you think something like that could happen, like both currently under COVID requirements. And then also in the future, like if we wanted to start advocating now for a particular thing, you know, to look, to look into the future when that's possible. Um, because I think everybody would love to have that back in place, um, you know? And I think, yeah, Sarah. Um, in terms of other ideas for longer term, I would like to ask Danielle when she's ready to come back and talk to us about where she's at with the, the mural guidelines. We know we funded that last year and mm -hmm. before she's finished with it, I'd like this for us to get a draft or just be able to have a conversation about how it's going. Okay. And I know you mentioned maybe me talk to her on my own, but I feel like it would make more sense to have a conversation with yeah. us. Yeah. I and even so. if she just sends it to us and we look at it and then have a conversation and get back, she doesn't necessarily have to sit through a three hour meeting with us, but uh, yeah. I would like an update. Okay. Good idea. Yeah, that is a good idea. Yeah, I remember that. I kind of dropped it. I think one thing that may come up in the near future, just put it on the radar, but it may be something we want to do is um, we received a request from somebody this past week who had a neighbor who passed away and they did in their cul-de-sac a chalk, like just a chalk drawing, um, just kind of to celebrate her life. And they sent in a message and asked if they could um, get permission from the city to make it a permanent, to do it in um, paint. And we have not had, which is a lovely idea, <laughs> um, but we don't have a policy around that. And so it actually got bumped up to, I don't know, city council or somebody to talk about um, kind of what, what that opens the door up for, if we give permission to some people and not others, or what kind of approvals would need to be made. Um, so nothing had been decided at all about that. I just wanted to sort of let you know that that was a request that came forward and it's something that we might need to create some kind of protocol or policy around in the future. Yeah, it almost like should we talked about with our Day of the Dead conversation, I feel like, and sort of ways the city can support memorializing individuals who passed away. First. Yeah. Because like there there is that bench downtown, right? That's the two kids who died of a died of a drug overdose. Mm -hmm. Um so I yeah and, and we, we also home. we also have Ellie's corner, you know, on pole line. The the woman who was run over by the tomato truck when my son was 12. We were at the um we were at the Little League Park actually when that happened, and you know they there's her white bike and and um, crib and and such there. I mean that's been going on literally for 15 plus years. Yeah, we do. We do 25 have a years maybe. Yeah, and it's it's right. You don't. I, I mean, I, I think. I'm I think surprised it's been so long. <laughs> the conversation yeah. with someone in terms of guidelines is if you want to memorialize somebody in a public art way, we have ways to get funding for a public art piece and you can work with an artist. It's not just, I did a drawing on the ground and now I want to turn it permanent. It's 
there's something that's moving me to create a piece of public art that also memorializes someone's life. And yeah. let's have a longer conversation about the different ways of linking these two things, our public art project and someone's desire to memorialize somebody. So. Yeah, yeah. And we do have, um, there's a memorial, there's, the Frankel family has a memorial in a Royal Park, a mosaic um, piece that they originally did with Donna Billick. Um, that some of you have seen, you might know that it may, may or may not know it's a memorial. It's like the sort of umbrella looking thing that's in front of the Arroyo pool. Um, there is the bench Sarah mentioned, which is downtown kind of by Ace. There is the Julie Partansky Memorial area up by North Star. So there's a variety of things like that. And um, the- There's a Memorial Garden over by um, uh, the uh, University Retirement URC. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, uh, yeah, so there, there are a number of things like that. And then the city also has a, you know, you can buy a bench and inscribe the plaque on the bench, which is a totally different thing. But it does bring up, you know, if we start giving permission to people to do something like that on their street, it just way opens up a can of worms of then yeah. what's approved, who can do it, who decides. And then like, it's like, who decides then? And is it a memorial or is it become like, it's it's it becomes very very um can of wormy like yeah do it in your driveway <laughs> that's your driveway yeah well then uh, you get into property. issues between uh division do it on your church and state your... you know yeah, do it on do it on your driveway yeah. like the your garage door i mean yeah. lots of public spaces that you personally own you can do whatever you want with it's different if yeah. you're talking about public land yeah that's yeah. shared because it's shared. Right. Yeah. Well, and it brings up maintenance issues and it brings up like if right. somebody is supportive of it and then they move and then the person that moves in is not yeah. and it's in there. Yeah. So, okay. Well, so that's good initial feedback. And then if it may be something we bring on as an official topic in the future, depending on sort of what happens. All right. You just call us in to talk to people. If you need, <laughs> if you need a heavy, we'll be the heavy. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I need to have you all the time. <laughs> all right. Any other um, long term? Like those were great items for us to put on long term. And are there any other, any other things to stick on there that you can think of right now? Nope. All right. Sounds good. But the only thing that I would like to potentially have a longer conversation about is the um, the wastewater treatment project. Mm -hmm. I okay. saw the agenda and I saw like that it's being postponed and I saw there's a community process, but I just would like to get an update on what the process is for input. Yeah, I can, I mean, I can give you just right now a little update on that. No, no, we okay. don't need it now. I'd okay. let's, I would just say let's, when, when we have a fuller group, let's have a lot okay. of conversation. Okay. Thank you. We'll do. And I can actually even bring in, um, we can bring in Chang and Snyder, who's the the consultant yeah. that we're working with and they could kind of go through that a little um and i can also forward to you the proposal that they had because it sort of spells out in there oh ruth your head disappeared it's super creepy <laughs> 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 you lost your head and it was just a mandala head <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah I'll, I'll try to we can do that in the future for sure and um, i would the other thing i'd like to like, i'd like to suggest is whatever whenever COVID ends, like we're never staying in house or we're like, when we now can have music or whatever that marker is, we might want to have a community celebration. And that might be like a year from now, but it just feel like it might be good to start planning for whatever that looks good like. Good idea. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah, be ready. I agree. Mm -hmm. And I have seen- It may last... be longer than a year from now. <laughs> I know, I'm like- Ugh. yeah. I think I think somebody else will be planning that, and so like we don't need to plan it, but we will certainly be involved with bringing in the music. As long as it's the... not the downtown Davis business association. <laughs> I don't think it will be. I, I um, take it, Sarah, that you're impressed with them. <laughs> they did a great zombie thing on Halloween. I think they were really creative and thoughtful. All right. I think it would be, I, I do genuinely think it's something to think about in the future, how the Arts Commission can reach out to them with some 
guidance because I think that they want to do good. And I think it's not necessarily, I don't know that working on things that are like addressing super diverse populations or anything like that is on their radar at all. I mean, not at all, but it's not their mission, but I think they need to continue to hear from various parts of the community that it's important and that it's beneficial to them, that it benefits them, that it increases um, yeah. people downtown. I mean, it totally supports what they need to do to, to work into that direction and what they're doing. Um, and I was, I was kidding. I was talking more about the geography than anything else. I mean, if we're gonna have a community celebration, we'd wanna think about like all the different neighborhoods, obviously. Yeah. Every um, park should be full of live music and dancing yeah, people. Yeah, well, that, that's what I was saying. Like, it's not our, us to organize, yeah. but certainly to think about, yeah. you know, the music and art component of a community-wide celebration like that, I think. Yeah. But I do yeah. think now, like in the last three weeks, probably, we have, I have, people have been starting to do live music outside and it hasn't been shut down. And I think some of it's been directly supported in one way or another. So, so I do think that's something that like, I mean, now that it's just getting into rainy season, perfect. <laughs> um, but that we could really start thinking about how we could support something like that or, you know, or even when it starts to clear up more or for their outdoor covered areas, like identifying places like that where, you know, things can happen. And then the yeah, no, and I'm happy like to be part of that discussion given that we just did the, the other art events. Yeah. Uh -huh. How do we how do we have additive events, right? Like yeah, multiple small gathering events. Yeah. Both did you guys have Sarah when you did your project outside? I don't know where we're getting like somebody else's um background noise. I don't know where that's coming from, but um did you got did you have um live music i can't remember what i've been to that's had live music yeah did we you, had las raices yes okay and so was there any like any kind of backlash to that at all or i mean mostly it just seemed amazing to have live music i was just so happy to see people make music outside but like people that's, were just really careful everyone yeah. was wearing masks there was a little we just had to be careful with people dancing near the artist because the artists yeah. couldn't wear masks while they were performing yeah. We just had to keep people separate from them. Yeah. And that seems like E Street Plaza seems like a great spot possibly to think about, you know, just because they've already done a little bit with closing off some parts of the parking lot in the street and having music out there. And so there's already a little bit of precedent set for that. I think they've had people playing in E Street Plaza in the little, clam, you know, the little like theater thing there. Um, one thing that's going to be an interesting change is that the farmer's market just announced that they are going to discontinue having music at the farmer's market, which I'm kind of shocked by. I don't really understand what the back story to that is. They're going to good stop or just for now for good. Um, good, for good. They're discontinuing the music and the beer garden aspect of the farmer's market. And Davis downtown is thinking of adopting that someplace else in downtown, which there isn't really, as far as I can tell, another venue in downtown that accommodates like, you know, 2000 people having picnics on the grass, listening to music. So I don't know what the plan is for that, but, um, oh, that's too bad. and maybe there, maybe there's a conversation about somebody else coming in and, and picking up that aspect. And that part hasn't just been announced yet. I mean, I just found out, so I'm actually going to, I'm kind of curious to reach out and find out because to me, that's like our best, biggest signature city event and why you would cut out the beer and the music <laughs> it's not really be nice to have a little more money and get some bands that are a little more um you know the, just that are a little, little more, more professional <laughs> that but, was actually um, one of the things one of the reasons they cited for getting rid of it was they said people had been asking them to get better music and so they were just like, not able, I mean, and in all fairness, like they run the farmer's market. So their, their yeah. thing is about running the farmer's market, not about running like a public music thing, but it's, but it's a totally important part of it. So it would make a lot of sense to step in and have somebody else take on that aspect of it, because I think there are a lot of people that would like to see a more diverse and higher caliber, um, you know, like schedule of performers there. Um, so all great topics. I feel like 
Hold on, Diane has her hand raised. Oh, and she's in charge, so she should just. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anyone. Um, do you think it has to do with the singing and the COVID and stuff is why they're no. discontinuing? No, okay. because they made an announcement that even after COVID that this was like their direction. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't know the background of it. Um, Can I ask a quick question? This is about something that we were talking about before, but I have to go. So I, I, I don't know how much longer are we scheduled to go? I think we should wrap up as soon as possible. Cause I just looked at what time it was and I should get off too. So yeah, go ahead. Oh, I just really, you might not be able to answer it, but what is Whole Food and Amazon going to do with that space? Why are they holding on to it? They, they had a 10 year lease on it and they have closed a bunch of their stores in a lot of different cities, I think in the same exact way, because it's more cost effective for them. Like they're losing less money by paying rent on it, sitting empty than they are by operating it. It's horrible. I mean, it's so destructive, obviously, to business in the downtown to have that giant space empty. It really impacted, I mean, I know personally store owners down there who closed their stores because they didn't have the foot traffic that they needed in that because the anchor location there is vacant. Um, so, and there's not any way right now that the, because of the contract there, I mean, this is my understanding is they can't, they can't end it, you know, like the business, the property owner they have a contract. So unless either one of those parties like, you know, is in violation of their contract, I don't know why they haven't voided it and put something else there, but um, I don't really know the legal ramifications of that, but that's my understanding of the status of it Probably right now. Probably a good tax deduction for them if they're operating a loss like that. Yeah. 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 Like warehousing, you know, they're just warehousing places in New York. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they're holding on to it with the idea that if the market changes, they would put something else in there or if the thought that they could use it for something else if they needed to. Um, but it's super unfortunate. So are we going to adjourn? I feel bad ending on that note. I don't want to end on unfortunate being the last word that we're... <laughs> Well, Ruth, tell us the story about the mandalas behind your head. Yes. Oh, so um, these were done by my students, seventh and eighth graders at my school where I teach. And I wanted to come up with a project that was joyous and technically not difficult to do remotely, but would also result in just a lot of variety and diversity of ability, still being able to do something beautiful. And I was delighted beyond my wildest dreams by what they created. You know, these kids who some of them had not really been doing anything before. Everyone seemed to love it. It's a great project. It's very meditative. And it's, it's something they can work on independently. The instruction portion takes about five minutes. I'm not exaggerating. And then it's very independent. And um, I had gotten them all these beautiful colored pencils. So they were able to do this. And you did an amazing actually, job raising money to get everyone, every student, each their own art supplies. Yeah, yeah, we got an art kit for everybody and um, managed to get it to everybody. And actually, I've been communicating today with my principal about doing a mural project around the school of this, and he's super into it. So I think these are going to turn into big murals around their school, which I think would be beautiful, don't you? So beautiful, yeah. I do. I'm like looking at them and thinking, where could we do a giant mandala downtown outside or somewhere? Wouldn't that be great? I mean, I just think it's such a, I mean, and look at these things too. There's some of them are so detailed. Yeah. Like this one right here, right? This one right, right here. Where I can't, where's my finger? <laughs> the one directly above your head in the middle? This one, you can't see my finger, but there it is right there. Okay, that one. Oh yeah. That student didn't do anything in my class before that. Wow. Wow. Power of art. <laughs> they would also look amazing printed or painted on tiles. Yeah, that's a great idea. Put up somewhere. Super good idea. Yeah, we have a mandala that's two stories high on the side of our office in Sacramento. It's part of wide open walls. I don't know. I can't remember if I've seen that one or not. 
You should send us a picture of it. I'm sure I could find it. I'm sure I've seen it, but I will. That's cool. All right. Well, thank I have you. A, I have a hundred was... of these. I have a hundred of these. Just so you want, if in case you want to see any more. No, I mean, I'm looking at them thinking like, where could you put the dollar? Like, I, I don't know, like any place we can put anything right now that's like colorful and joyous and meditative and positive is a good, it's a good thing to do right now. So, um, all right. <laughs> it's, it's not. <laughs> oh, beautiful. That's one. Wow, that's not a mandala, but that's my favorite. I, know, I was like, that's not a mandala. meets a serpent. <laughs> what is that? I'll text it to you. All right, I gotta show you guys. And now we're we're like not anymore on our. That's my mask I've been wearing for the last. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we're digressing okay. here though. We should, we should wrap up. Okay, <laughs> so um, if you have follow up notes about anything we spoke about that you forgot to bring up feel free to share them with me and I'll try to capture them in um, as far as like long-term and short-term um, meeting ideas. Otherwise, Diane, would you like to bring us adjourn in? the meeting? <laughs> Is it time to adjourn the meeting? I can't see you, so I have- Yes, please, if you would like to adjourn the meeting, that would be lovely. Okay, here you have it. Thank you. Thank you for pinch hitting at the end. Thank you, everybody. and. Um, the next meeting is going to be on December 14th, also at 4 p.m. And just to do a little quick check-in, how is this time working as a consistent time for everybody? OK. Okay. Zinzi? It's fine. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. Diane? Yeah. Fine. OK, cool. So I think for the time being, we'll keep it at this time. And then if um, we need to change it around, we can discuss that. If that becomes a if it becomes a time problem. All right, everybody. Have Thank a you. great week. Have a great Thank month. Thank you. Have a great period of time. So we see you again. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. And I just feel in those things like I'm just like blah 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 blah.